I'm gonna be showing you guys how I got a 9-9 nine nine in combined science, which, excuse me, 9-9, nine nine, me. Oh! channel today first of all i've got glasses on because today is study natanya smart natanya intelligent natanya okay <laughs> No, I'm kidding. Basically, I'm wearing glasses today because I'm filming at 8 o'clock and I didn't want to put contact lenses in because it'll be a waste because I'll just be putting it in just to film and then taking it out for the rest of the night. So I thought, might as well just wear my glasses because this is how I chill like around the house with my glasses on. And also, it makes me look dress code appropriate for the topic of today's video. So today, I'm going to be doing a requested video since my recent video of me opening my GCSC results live on camera. And basically, because of the grades that I got, which I'm so thankful for, you guys have um, been asking me to do videos on how I revised for the certain subjects that I've done well in Which I was always going to do but I always wanted to wait until after my results in order to do these videos So that like I seem more credible because I, I might not seem as credible to be doing a video on how I got good grades If my grades aren't actually good so yeah A lot of you guys are asking me to do um, a video on how I revised for my GCSEs in general How I revised for certain subjects So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do like a series of videos related to GCSEs So I'll do a video on how I advice for each subject, advice for GCSEs, anything related to GCSEs. So if you don't have any specific videos that you want to see, comment down below. If it's in high demand, I'll definitely film it for you guys. I'm going to be doing a how I revise for science, maths and English. Today's video is going to be science. I hope these videos are going to be useful for you a lot and I hope I can help you guys get the best grades possible and do well in school. I know GCSEs can seem really stressful, nerve wracking and scary, but trust me, you guys are going to get through it and I'm going to show you guys how I got through it, how I got the grades that I got and yeah I hope you guys enjoy I'm gonna be showing you guys how I got a 9-9 nine nine in combined science which excuse me 9-9 nine nine, me oh, let's get into this video <laughs> Okay, so basically, my journey with science has been a rough one. I'm pretty sure I've mentioned this before, but obviously for the context of this video, I'm going to mention it again. I have gone from basically 0 to 100 with science. Like, I used to be so bad at science. I started off in high sets because I'm guessing because of my predicted grades. My predicted grades are all 7s. So my school probably thought I was smart in science, so they used to put me in high sets. But I don't know what was wrong. I used to just always do bad in science. Like, it was a mixture of me not putting in the effort to understand science, me finding it boring, me not paying attention in lesson, me like purposely not answering the questions in the paper because I can't be bothered. Like it was literally so bad. I used to go into my exam, I would open the paper, look at all the questions, realise I can't answer any of them, close it and go to sleep. Like that's literally how all my science exams went. It was just one of my worst subjects, doing so bad in it. And literally from year nine onwards, I remember I used to always fail. I used to get threes, twos, fours, ungradable. And then it was when I got into year 10, things started going uphill. Prior to year 10, all my grades in other subjects used to be calm. I was doing good in other subjects, but then you'll just see the science poking out like a sore thumb. Like you just see me getting these low grades in science compared to all my other grades. Also, I don't know what it was, was with my school's science department but it was like every single class that I was put in every year I used to always have some kind of beef with the teacher like the teachers in the science department were just not trying to they weren't trying to like me like I used to always beef them there was always a problem I used to always get thrown out of the class I used to always argue with them and then obviously because first of all I don't even like the subject in the first place and then on top of that the teacher's not making me enjoy the subject and I'm always arguing with the teacher I'm always getting thrown out so it got to a point where the lesson I just didn't take it seriously I would go in there and have bad advice from the offset i didn't like my teachers i hated the lesson i hated the classroom everything about science was just off so from year seven to year nine i had bad teachers I used to always get thrown out of class I used to always have arguments in front of the whole class with the teachers and it was just a mess okay it was literally just a mess then year 10 came along and i moved sets from set three to set five because obviously the school was clocking on that i'm not good at science i shouldn't be in top sets in it so i must have got a four in my end of year exam in year nine so then i got moved to set five four is still a pass in it but obviously it's not good enough to be in set three in my school so I got moved to set five which is the bottom set <laughs> so I got moved to the bottom set set five and then why am I doing a whole story time with science I don't even know if this is even relevant but yeah I got moved to set five in year 10 and I had a new teacher and my teacher was actually one of the top teachers in the science department and since then my 
my life changed for science. Like she made things easier for me and I started to understand things better. So even though I wasn't actually revising science, the stuff that I was learning in the lesson was staying into my head. So when the stuff that she was teaching me in the lesson come up in my exam, I was able to answer the questions related to that stuff, even though I had missed out on like three years of prior knowledge of science. So in year 10, I didn't know the basics in science. I didn't know any basic stuff. I didn't even know the difference between an element, mixture and a compound. I didn't know none of that stuff. Like I literally didn't know anything. I couldn't label any diagram to save my life. I couldn't even label an uh, animal cell or a plant cell. I didn't know the difference. Like, I didn't know the basic stuff in science. However, the stuff that my teacher was teaching me in year 10, I was able to apply that to my exam. So I started getting better grades. I'll show you guys how my science grades has progressed. Okay, so here, I'm not gonna show you lot the actual paper because it has my school in it and everything, but I keep track of all of my past exam results so I can read out to you guys what I used to get in science. This exam was in year nine. I got a four, four in combined science. That's the exam that got me moved down to set five. So then after that year nine exam, I had my first year 10 exam. So like just the first like kind of little exam and I got five, five. So I went from getting a four, four to a five, five just by having a new teacher, okay? No revision either, just using knowledge that my teacher taught me in lessons. So I went from a four, four to a five, five just by having a better teacher. Then the year 10 mock exams, so the end of year mock exams, I got six, six. So I've gone from now four, four to five, five to six, six. And you're seeing how I'm progressively getting better. And I'm pretty sure I didn't revise for that exam. I didn't start revising for anything until year 11. So I didn't revise for that and I got six, six. Then in my first ever exam in year 11, so this was a November exam, the first ever exams, I got seven, seven. So year 11 is when I got a new teacher. When I tell you, my current teacher, my year 11 teacher, is one of my favorite teachers. I literally love her. She's so good at teaching, it's unbelievable. And without her, I definitely wouldn't have got the nine nine that I have now, along with obviously my own revision stuff. But she was predominantly a reason why I got a nine nine. So yeah, having her, I was able to get a seven seven. Then for the year 11 mocks, I got nine eight. So I went from seven seven to nine eight. Then for my GCSE exams, got nine nine. Period. From a four four in year nine to a nine nine in year 11. So yeah, I've been rambling for so long. I'm just giving you a, lot, a bit more context, you know. I'm just gonna break down how I achieved the nine nine. So how I basically got good grades in year 11. Other than having an amazing teacher, I'm gonna share with you guys how I got that grade. And I'm gonna show you a lot of the resources I used in order to get that, okay? Okay, for year 11 mocks is when I done the most revision for science. Like if you look at my mock grades, I think I shared my mock grades with you sort before. My grades were good, but my science grade was the highest. I got a nine eight in science. And that was because most of my revision for my mocks was for science, because obviously that was my weakest subject. So I focused more on my science grade, which is why I was able to get a nine eight. The first tip that I will say is if you lot don't know about free science lessons, what are you doing with your life? What are you doing with your life? For me, free science lessons was the best, the best. I'm gonna show you guys. It's a YouTube channel, as you can see, and he has playlists for every paper. So he has a chemistry paper one playlist, physics paper one, biology paper one, chemistry paper two, biology paper two, physics paper two, like every single paper that you do with AQA science. And he does combined and triple science, by the way. Obviously triple science is a bit more content, but he does both of them. He literally does condensed three to four minute videos of each topic. So for example, if I go to the chemistry chemistry paper one playlist. It has the title chemistry paper one and then there's different playlists within chemistry paper one. Cause obviously there's different like subtopics within chemistry. If I just click on the one where it's atomic structure and the periodic table, it says it has 20 videos about that topic. And obviously you can see that I've watched them all. <laughs> the first video is called elements, compounds and mixtures. So then within that video, you will condense all the information you need to know. So it's just the precise points that you need to know about each topic. And that makes things so much better because it's not useful getting a pile loads of information information when the examiner is only looking for key points in your answers that's one thing about GCSEs that is like you need to understand with your answers if you just know what the examiner is expecting you to say key words key points that the examiner wants to see within your answer then it's easy to get those marks because there's no point getting a question waffling and blurting out every single thing you know about compounds and mixtures when the example is only looking for certain words certain phrases within your answer to get you the marks you know what I mean so you need to really read the mark schemes and see what are reoccurring points that always come up in the mark scheme that you need to get so you know to be using that in your answers so this guy because the videos are so short he's basically minimizing the amount of waffle in your answers instead of using long 20 minute videos with some long explanations about simple topics he's condensing it into four minutes of key points that you need to include in your answers all of my science revision was from this guy i didn't use no other websites no other youtubers this was my own 
only YouTuber that I use and I got 99 from his videos, okay? And then he covers every topic, that's the thing, like every single topic in biology, chemistry, physics, paper one and paper two, he covers all of them. So then that's the first thing I did. I would always watch his videos and then from his videos, I would then, I had a folder for um, all of my subjects. For my section for science, I split it up into biology, chemistry and physics. What I would actually do is I would write notes based off of what the guy's saying in the video. So while the video is playing, I'll be writing the notes. I might pause the video to catch up on writing because I'm not a fast writer like that. And also I like my notes to be neat. So I'll pause the video, write what he's saying. And basically I would do like different titles for each topic or each video. So each video has a different topic in it. So I'll write the topic of the video at the top like that. And then I'll write notes about whatever he's saying. And what I found really useful is my notes are very colourful and colour coordinated. I don't just use black pen throughout all my notes. This isn't an important thing, but I feel like for me, if my notes look pretty, I'm more likely to look it. I'm more likely to want to read it. It's clearer to me because it's been colour coded. Like if it was just all in black messy handwriting, it wouldn't be clear to me. I found for me, writing in different coloured pens and making certain words stand out more than others, having nice pretty titles, using different coloured pens, making my handwriting neat, actually helped motivate me to want to read the work and understand the work, okay? What I would do is within a sentence that I write, I would make sure to put the key phrases that I need to include in my answers in a different colour so that it stands out. Also, what the guy does, the free science lessons guy, when he's filming his videos, he has like captions at the bottom and within the caption, he'll also put certain words in bold or a different colour so that you know as well that, oh, I need to make sure I include this phrase in my answer. I need to make sure I include this word in my answer. I also loved to do diagrams. I think diagrams are very easy for me to understand. So for example, in the carbon cycle, I've done this diagram at the top and then underneath the diagram, I also had bullet point version of what was going on within the diagram to like further explain what's going on in the diagram. I'll show you another one. I'll do the exact same method for everything else. To be honest, I don't know what I'm gonna do with all of these notes. Like, I don't think I would sell them because like, I don't know. Yeah, these all got going in the bin, I guess. I might just keep here. I might need it for psychology at A level. But um, yeah, so that's how I would do my notes. And then, and then, this is where the information got screwed into my brain, okay? Flashcards, 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 more flashcards, more more flashcards, more flashcards. Flashcards are my best friend. I don't care what anyone says. Flashcards were literally my best friend. As soon as I started doing flashcards, I realized this is really the thing for me. To be honest, yeah, everyone has their own ways of revising. Like, I know some of my friends used to use mind maps for science revision and they didn't really like the whole flashcards thing. But for me, I swear by flashcards. Like if someone asked me, how did you get 99 in science? My first word to come out of my mouth would be flashcards, flashcards. As you can see, I have a lot of flashcards because I have flashcards for biology, chemistry, physics paper one, and then the paper two of the three sciences. So six packs of flashcards, as you can see. I cannot even explain how effective flashcards are for me. So the video was like the first source of information. Then my notes were a condensed version of the video. And remember, the videos I was watching were already condensed because they were only four minutes long. So they were already a condensed version of what you would see in a textbook. So now I've got my condensed four minute video. Then I would condense the video even more by writing notes. Then I condensed the notes even more by fitting it onto a small flashcard. I was trying to minimize the amount of information in order to get the marks I need to get without having to remember too much, you know what I mean? So with my exam papers, as soon as I would see a question, all the key words would just pop up into my head related to that topic. I remember my friends used to always test me on my flashcards and I used to always remember every single thing on each flashcard. Like even my biology flashcards, which are thick, I would just show you an example of a flashcard. So this is from Physics Paper 2. By the way, I didn't go out and buy no fancy flashcards. I literally got pieces of paper and cut them up into rectangles. Like, I was ghetto with it and I would literally use hairbands to keep it together. You don't need too much guys. You actually don't need too much. So for example, this says Hooke's Law at the front. Then if you look at what it says on the other side of the flashcard, I've written the answer and I also highlight the key words as well. I don't know what it is about a yellow highlighter. I don't know if it's a psychological thing, but for some reason, I I started photographically remembering my flashcards. Like in my head, the bold yellow highlighted words would always stick in my head. It's more important for you to remember the stuff rather than actually like learn it. Obviously it's good to know it and just learn it that makes it easier. But with science, I started revising through it in year 11 and I got top grades by just remembering the stuff I need to say. If I just remember the key points, then it's easier to get the marks. And that is how flashcards saved my life, like literally. I forgot to mention, I actually done a different form of flashcards 
flashcards as well. Another good tip is to create flashcards for the required practicals in the chemistry, physics and biology. So I would create bigger size flashcards and then on the back of each flashcard I would have all the information and a step by step of each of the required practicals in the exam. So on the back I would have a step by step and I would highlight all the key parts of the practical because practicals are actually worth like six marks so it's really important that you know all of your required practicals otherwise you'll just lose out on easy six marks for example rate of reaction i'll put a subheading because this is rate of reaction for change in mass and then on the back i'll put a step by step of that practical six marks can make a difference like six marks can bring you from a six to a seven so i think it's really important to create flashcards or even if flashcards aren't your thing create mind maps or whatever of the required practicals but this is just the way that i think was the most effective and yeah if you don't use flashcards i think you should try it out obviously it's not for everyone but for me they were the best way of revising. I was in a tough position because I was trying to learn and remember the whole of science, like from year seven to year 11, I had to learn all of that. So all the basic stuff that most people already knew in year 11, I didn't know that stuff. So as someone who had to basically start from the beginning, flashcards, I can say, were the best way of retaining information. This flashcard says, what is a mixture? I actually remember being taught this in year seven, but I wasn't listening. There you go. I wasn't listening. That's another thing. Listen, although I was still able to turn around my grades and I was still able to come out with the top grades it took a lot of effort like I said majority of my revision had to be focused on science whereas if I had been listening and focusing throughout my whole secondary school life I could have put that energy into my other subjects and could have got nines in other subjects because of my failure to listen my failure to take science seriously I had to put extra effort in order to get a top grade in science prioritizing science so much that it caused me to neglect other subjects where I could have actually got better grades in but it's fine I still ended up getting the grades I needed to get but for you guys I would advise to not mess around just listen to what your teacher's saying write down what they're saying it'll be useful my teacher made these a3 pieces of paper about topics that can be a bit confusing I found this really good it was a good thing to refer to like I just stuck it up on my wall obviously you guys can make it yourself or if you guys want this feel free to dm me I'll give it to you anything in this video that you guys are interested in dm me I'll give it to you for a small fee or I'll put it off my depot you know the drill this was a very good way of learning because it differentiates things that can be confusing and things you can get mixed up between. I think tables are quite a good way to retain information. Any way of writing notes that it doesn't involve writing paragraphs and paragraphs and paragraphs and paragraphs of notes is better. Condense, condense, condense. Like that is literally the key word for this video. Another piece of paper that I had stuck on my wall, this flow chart. In stuff like chemistry and biology, there's a lot of like processes where you need to remember the stages of each process. So for stuff like that, I would recommend flow charts you have one stage arrow another stage arrow another stage like that's the easy way to remember stuff underline keywords and put them in bold and then put the definition of the keywords below yeah this is really good I had it stuck on my wall another thing with me I never actually understood the diagram of the heart I understood it but I felt like I needed more of a visual representation other than a real life heart so what I did is I printed off a picture of a heart a diagram of the heart like this and then I found this easier to understand because I I could actually physically label what the things are and yeah I found this very useful so if you're someone like me who needs to be shown instead of told then printing out diagrams is easier and they have a diagram of the body you have to label the different parts print it out label it yourself and remember what the picture looks like the last thing that I would say is pretty generic it's actually useful and it's past papers past questions when I told you my science teacher like I already said she was amazing she used to um, go out of her way to print out booklets full of exam questions per topic answering practice questions are good because like the more practice questions you do the more easier it gets because it's a thing where like you're just repeating it and repeating and repeating it to the point where it's literally just light work you will know how to answer the question okay my teacher also printed out a checklist for us so this is a physics checklist and it will have every single topic on there so i can tick it off as i go along so i know that yep i've revised that yep i've revised it but in the second row i can tick to say yeah i've done it but i also understand it that's a good way to organize your work so you know what stuff you understand what stuff you need to work on i think that's all i did just to summarize the most important things i would say for achieving a 9-9 in science is free science lessons definitely recommend that i'd recommend flashcards past papers past questions if you're doing something in class and you feel like you need more work on it don't just leave it go to your teacher ask them can i have extra questions on this i want to practice go home practice it over and over again until it's like a second language to you and you'll be fine i used to literally pace up and down my living room going over and over these flashcards and i wouldn't stop until 
until I memorized every single thing on every single flashcard. Oh, my mom, if you don't believe me, I would go through every single one of these flashcards 10 times if I have to in order to make sure I remember every single thing on every single flashcard. That's how you get top grades. How are you gonna get top grade if you don't remember everything? I think that's all the tips I have for this video. I kind of waffled a bit. I'm trying to be as helpful as possible and I hope everything that I said makes sense. If you don't have any other further questions, feel free to DM me on Instagram. I will totally reply to you as lot and help you guys out. Especially if you're the class of 2021 that are doing your GCSEs next year after missing six months of school. It's a lot, okay? If you want any of the revision material that I have, feel free to also DM me. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll be doing a video for maths maybe and definitely English language and literature. But if there's any other subjects that you guys want me to do a video on, comment down below. If not a lot of people are requesting it, then just DM me personally and I'll speak to you one-to-one -one about how I was successful in that subject. Yeah, I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye guys. Y'all better subscribe to my daughter's okay, channel. Mom.